Um, so, so the first question was about what are, what are the personal learnings from this time of the pandemic. Um, and for me, it's, it's been an interesting time personally. Uh, before the pandemic, the general council was very busy. We had been doing a lot of travelling. Um, I'd been in North America, I'd been in Africa, and then we'd had the meetings of the provincials. And by the time the meeting of the provincials was over, the pandemic had hit and the borders were starting to close and more and more um, airlines were cancelling flights. So it was a real change of life for me. It was a change from moving from a very busy life, a life full of scheduled meetings, uh, talking to a lot of people, uh, doing a lot of travelling, to a life um, where I was at home the whole time. And for me, it was a very important time, this time of being at home. Uh, it was a time where I was able to reconnect with my contemplative life. I've always found it important for myself to have a contemplative time every day. And I found that I was missing that when I was traveling and was very busy. So since the pandemic, Started and since we've been stuck at home, um, I've found that part of my life has started up again, that I've been able to connect with my contemplative side. And therefore, I think my relationship with God has changed. I was reading a book recently by a Jewish uh, author, a Jewish girl. Um, Hetty, her name's Etty, Etty Hillstrom. Uh, she's a Jewish mystic, uh, and she was killed in Auschwitz during the Second World War. And in the book, she talked about the vulnerable God inside. And that became very important for me during this time. There was a sense that during the pandemic, we've, come, we've connected again with the God that is vulnerable, the God that is vulnerable in everybody, um, the God that is with the poor, the God that is with the people in need. And that's been very much part of my prayer during, these, during this time of pandemic. I think the other important learning for me was how indispensable I am. You know, I realised that just being on the General Council, that it's not, it's not such an important job. <laughs> you, you do lots of things and you have lots of privileges and you meet lots of people, which is which is a great privilege and you are connected with the Marist world in many, many ways, in ways that other Marists are not. But in reality, the world keep, kept moving along. Marist life and Marist charism continued to move along. Uh, and so I think that sense of, I'm not indispensable, you know, I'm not indispensable, was an important learning for myself. With regard to the Institute, it's interesting. I think one of the things I've learned is how important it is, it is to remain connected to people. We've developed a very significant and important process now of remaining connected, particularly to the provincials of, and the district leaders, uh, online. And I think all of us on the General Council have a number of meetings each week online. And that's been important, and I sense from those meetings that the provincials really appreciate the fact that we are connected with them, uh, we're listening to their stories, we're listening to their experience in this very unusual and very difficult time. And I think that's important for us, that we remain connected with people and that we're able to listen to people about what's happening, what's happening in each of the provinces, what's happening to the Marists in various parts of the world as they learn about, they learn how to live in this new reality of the pandemic. So I think that's one important thing for the animation of the Institute is the skill of listening to each other, of trying to understand each other's experiences and trying to discern together how to live as Marists during this time. The other thing that I think that is very important for the Institute is to the need to reprioritize what we do. I think the calls for the general chapter of the general chapter, the calls of the general chapter, were very important. And now is a time where we need to look at those calls again 
and learn how to live those calls out in a new reality. Uh, the world has changed in the last six months and it's changed incredibly. It's changed such a lot. And we need to now understand what it means to be Marists in the new reality. And what are the calls of the general chapter calling us to in this new reality? And therefore, it's going to be different. Our priorities will need to change. There will need to be a discernment of what our, our priorities are. And I think one of the priorities will be the priority of being in communion. Some people call it solidarity. I like to call it communion. It's going to be how are we in communion with each other? How are we in communion with the poor around us? And how are we in communion with young people whose lives have been changed so much by the pandemic? I think that's going to be something during the next years that we're going to have to keep on discerning, uh, keep on under, trying to develop a better understanding of. Some of us have the opportunity at a time like this to do cor courageous things. Like I'm continually impressed by reading about Maoists in different parts of the world and how they've gone, they've gone out of their way to help the poor in their area, how they fed people, how they've looked after people. Um, and I know from the work that happens in FMSI, we've funded some projects during the pandemic that have made a real impact on the life of, the, of some very poor people. But I think for most of us, it's more the connections, it's the communion that we can make in our normal day-to-day -day lives. That we make an effort to connect with each other, that we make an effort to remain in connection with each other, and that we make a real effort to be in communion with each other. I think that's a, a, a very important part of being Marist at this time.